This video is about the exhibition Revolusi in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, which is about the Indonesian Revolution which happened between 1945 and 1949. This period is also known as the Indonesian War of Independence. But the reason to call the exhibition Revolusi because it was not just war but also diplomacy, journalism, it was a revolution in Indonesian art and it affected people their daily lives. So there are objects linked to 20 people who experienced the Indonesian revolution. If you have questions, put them in the comment or send me a DM on my Instagram. I've been to the revolution exhibition for four times. And the third time, I was a guest to a guide for the Indonesian Dutch Youth Society or INES, which was a mixed group of Indonesian people and Dutch people who either have or don't have a connection to Indonesia and other people. And there I started here with the map of Indonesia to give some background. In the past few years here in the Netherlands, there are historical debates about the colonial period. There are processes of decolonization of how this colonial period is regarded now with new ideas and new perspectives. One of those are the exhibitions in the museums I've talked about in my previous videos of the exhibition about the Golden Coach, Slavery and the Spice Trade, you can see it. There was the movie The Oast, released in 2021, which was about the Indonesian War of Independence, but most importantly, the book Revolusi by the Belgian author David van der Rijbroek, also made a documentary you can see it here and also made a podcast you can listen to here it's all in dutch and there was the joint research about this period which was to be released at the start of 2022 and this resulted in the apology by the dutch prime minister mark rutte for the excess of finance during that period this exhibition is a collaboration between indonesian and dutch creators among them also historians there's a live stream about the exhibition you can watch, I will put a link here, where people involved are talking about the ideas for making the exhibition, but also discuss the subjects in the exhibition. So let's start with the exhibition. So the exhibition starts with the proclamation, or the proclamation of independence on the 17th of August 1945, two days after the Japanese surrendered. The focus in this room is on the journalist Sumarto Frans Mandur, who took the famous photo at that moment. And in the second room you can see pictures by Sotar Sonas Rodin, a soldier in the Indonesian army. And in the middle of the room you can see his photo album, which was confiscated by the Dutch intelligence service. It's quite scary because he was murdered right after in 1948. The scary feeling of ghosts in the past continues in the third room, where artist Timotheus Angawan Kosno made the art installation Loka dan Bisa Kubawa Berlari. This consists of frames of painting of governor generals of the Dutch East Indies colony. And you can see Johannes van den Bos, who was responsible for the Kulturstelsel or the cultivation system. And in the fourth room, you're in the middle of the demonstration at the Ikata Square, which is now Midan Merdeka, or the Freedom Square. This was a demonstration on 19 September 1945, where President Sukarno gave his speech. In the next room, there's a picture and remaining pieces of the Von Heuts monument, which was located on the Von Heuts plain, which is now Jalan Taman Jutmutia in Jakarta. This monument was dedicated to Jo Van Heuts, an officer in the Dutch colonial army who fought in the bloody Aceh war. On the monument you can see painted Indonesia, never again the life blood of any nation. The next rooms have stories tied to themes, the first one being violence. This violence happened at the start of the revolution against people associated with the colonial system. Indonesian revolutionary groups attack Europeans but also in the European Chinese and Malagans. The story of Europeans who were just released from the Japanese internment camps is represented by Jean van der Leur de Loos, her gown. This gown was made from a British silk army map because textiles were scarce. The story of the Indian Europeans is represented by a photo of Anna Sophia Ullenbusch and a list of others who were murdered in Tagal due to the violence of Indonesian revolutionary groups. And lastly, the story of Chinese Indonesians, represented by a photo album of Leti Kwe, 
who experienced the violent period. Violence also happened when the British were involved in the Kyoto transition period in the last half of 1945, as the Dutch army wasn't there yet. The clash between the Indonesians and the British led to the Battle of Surabaya, which I've talked about in another video. Among the British were Indian and Nepalese troops, but also the Australian war reporter Tony Rafti, who drew the battle featured on the wall. The next room exists out of objects from the Dutch intelligence service, their collection. Objects such as Indonesian propaganda posters on the wall and photo albums were confiscated from Indonesians who were captured. And the service also made secret reports on Indonesian key figures such as Sharir dan Malaka. The next room is called War and Diplomacy because the Dutch did two major military offenses in Dutch called Policio Nela Oxis and Indonesian Agresi Militer Belanda, which happened between 1947 and 1949. I think the most interesting object is that of Mohamed Toha Arimujo, who was 11 years old when the Dutch attacked Yogyakarta in December 1948. Also striking is the shirt with bullet holes worn by Jokardarai Budak, who was murdered by the Dutch in Ubud, Bali in 1946. In contrast to this is the diplomacy with the Linganjati agreement of the same year. The drawings of the Dutch and Indonesian delegation is made by the famous painter Heng Ngantong. The next room features art by Indonesian artists inspired by the revolution. The most famous one being Avandi. And I really like that Indonesian artists are exhibited here in that actual scene. There were two paintings by Basuki Abdullah, one painting of the Indonesian vice president. Mohamed Hatta and one of the Dutch Queen Juliana. An interesting detail is the smoking volcano in the background representing the war that was happening. One of the last rooms is called Merdeka meaning freedom which focuses on December 1949 when the Netherlands finally transferred sovereignty to the Indonesian Republic. There's a film of Soekarno celebrating that moment in Jakarta and also photos of that period such as the removal of the portrait of Governor General Rosenbaum. And in the very last room, there are 10 videos of 10 people, both in the Netherlands and Indonesia, who have a connection to the object featured in this exhibition. The videos are made by Beyond the Walls, and you can see all 10 of them on the YouTube channel of Thanks to Sim. I will link it. The many times I've been to the Revolution exhibition, I've not only like looked at history, but also talked about history with the people I was with so either people from Indonesia the Netherlands or other countries so I learned more about the Indonesian side from Indonesian friends and visitors and they learned more about the Dutch side and the Indo-European side from my family history I was also curious what their impressions were so here are their impressions menarik itu soalnya sejarah kemerdekaannya itu bisa dilihat dari dua sisi dari sisi Belanda sama dari sisi Indonesia Betul. Uh, terus tadi juga pas di dalam banyak beberapa kayak benda-benda yang di display juga. Contohnya kayak poster-poster pas zaman uh, pas zaman sih waktu-waktu detik-detik kemerdekaan gitu. Hmm. Jadi kayak ngerasa kayak oh zaman dulu tuh Indonesia perjuangannya gitu banget gitu. Karena sebelumnya tuh di Indonesia pun aku nggak pernah lihat bukti-bukti sejarah kayak gitu sih. Hmm, jadi kayak jadi, dari segi medianya gitu ya. Iya betul. Ya. Terus di dalam juga uh, dapat cerita-cerita juga gitu dari anak-anak uh, yang sekarang masih hidup lah ceritain tentang orang tuanya dulu gimana hmm, kayak gitu sih terus ya di kayak berasa feels like home juga kan pas ngelihat uh, apa eksibisinya gitu kayak hmm. wondering juga ini barangnya kok bisa nyampe sini gitu <laughs> menurut gue museumnya keren banget sih banyak banget hal-hal baru yang gue pelajarin contohnya ada ternyata orang Belanda tani namanya Tania yang bener-bener hidup untuk memajukan kemerdekaan Indonesia dan dia menyebarkan berita baik ini tuh ke negara-negara seperti di Singapura, di Kamboja, Hong Kong dan lain-lain. Dan yang paling menariknya lagi adalah propaganda-propaganda yang dibawa ke sini karena sebelumnya di museum-museum lain yang tadi Belanda ataupun di Indonesia belum pernah melihat propaganda-propaganda seperti itu dan itu menggambarkan betapa perjuangan itu benar-benar dilakukan untuk mencapai kemerdekaan Indonesia. Hmm, iya kalau ya sama sih kalau menurut gue yang paling menarik itu adalah Uh, melihat bagaimana seniman-seniman uh, itu bisa turut berpartisipasi dalam perjuangan kemerdekaan. Jadi kayak ada pamflet-pamflet, poster, dan lukisan-lukisan juga. Jadi uh, menarik sekali untuk 
Oui. Very interesting indeed to see um, a lot of new things, especially for me, I'm German, and I didn't know much about the Indonesian history. So very nice to see how, uh, yeah, the revolution started, how it developed, and. Uh, how the connection to the Netherlands actually is. Ik vond het zich opvallen dat er best wel veel jonge mensen aan boven kwamen. Uh, wat ik wel echt nice vond. En ook iets wat ik misschien wat minder um, vanzelfsprekend vind. Dat er heel veel jonge mensen bij revolutie aanwezig zijn. Maar dat heeft ook alweer dat, echt, een beetje dat gevoel van jong zijn en revolutie willen. De tozing vond ik ook mooi vormgeven. Irma Boom, super nice. Kita jadi dapat perspektif yang berbeda, melihat dari perspektif yang berbeda tentang sejarah kemerdekaan kita. Selama ini kita belajar dari dari buku sejarah, perspektif basically beda sih. No, I agree. I also got a really new perspective um, of our history. And I think it was also a little bit emotional for me because it's a personal story. And my grandpa was Dutch and I have relatives who live here. And they have shared their stories of moving um, from Indonesia to the Netherlands and having to choose if they wanted to stay there and risk being oppressed and discriminated against. But also coming here was not the ideal uh, situation for them. So it was a hard choice and like the family had to split up. So I think it uh, makes you think from a bigger perspective about the war and about the idea of colonization and everything. Uh, ik heb zelf uh, Indonesisch bloed van, uh, van mijn opa, mijn hoofdgrootoma. En uh, nou, vanuit huis uit is daar nooit over gepraat. Dus daar, van, vanuit de familie heb ik daar heel weinig over geleerd. Alles wat ik weet is wat ik zelf heb uh, uh, uitgevonden, zelf heb onderzocht. En uh, ik denk dat het heel goed is dat deze tentoonstelling hier nu is, zodat ook de, de jonge generaties. Uh, ja, Ik vond het een hele bijzondere expositie, omdat je normaal gesproken de geschiedenis heel erg sec en heel erg feitelijk krijgt. En nu zag je echt de verhalen achter de mensen. Dus dat vond ik wel heel gaaf aan. Maar aan het einde ook video's waar je ook die verschillende items van het museumstukken ook veel meer verhalen daarachter hoort en ook van de families daarachter. Dus uh, op die manier heel mooi, heel anders dan normaal. Yeah. What I personally like about this exhibition is that it is in the Rijksmuseum, the biggest museum in the Netherlands. So if like people are going for the Nachtwacht, they will also think, oh, I maybe want to see this exhibition. So it's very accessible for people who have a link to Indonesia or Indonesian history or don't even at all like tourists. So that's a good thing about it and what I also like is this is one of the few times you see the Indonesian perspective on colonial history here in the Netherlands because when I went to school I didn't learn anything about the Indonesian perspective on colonial history also the different stories of different groups of people but there is also a critique from me because you kind of have to know context to understand the position of um, Europeans, Indo-Europeans, Chinese, Indonesian, Moluccans and other groups. And that's also what's missing, context. Because you also have to know the context of the 350 years of Dutch occupation in Indonesia, but also the Second World War and why Japan was there. I've learned a lot. I hope you've learned a lot in this video. And I will see you in my next video.